This is TTELT, Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. I'm Dr. Gina Rhodes. Let's get started. Today, I'm interviewing Matthew Jellick, who I first met when he was my student at University of Southern California. Fight on. He was an excellent student, of course, and I encouraged him to apply to become an English Language Fellow, which he was for two years in Ethiopia. And then afterwards, he got a job at Sustec. Uh, he even invited me there. I did a week of training for his students and um, he's still there at Sustec teaching right now. And he's been doing a lot of amazing projects. So let's find out about them. This week, Matthew was talking to us about classroom management tips, especially for STEM uh, courses. Matthew, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Hi, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, my name is Matthew Jellick here at Southern University of Science and Technology, which is located in Shenzhen, China. Uh, I've been here for the past four years and prior to this have international teaching experience in Korea, New Zealand and Ethiopia. Uh, I hold a master's degree in teaching from the University of Southern California from USC uh, and prior to my international experience uh, teaching abroad, I taught migrant education up and down the West Coast in both Oregon and California. Um, I have been teaching at the university level for the past six years and in my current position I have grown in capacity from um, just a teacher, uh, you know, just a, a lecturer to doing a lot of uh, staff training methodology and pedagogy for different departments and taking on leadership roles within the department and across the university. Excellent. Thank you. It sounds like you're doing a lot of great things. Why do you think uh, classroom management is important? Well, uh, you know, I teach in a STEM university and so uh, English is necessary uh, as a necessary means for them to follow their career paths as that applies to science, you know, technology, engineering and mathematics. And I view classroom management as important because these students are not here to necessarily learn English, but to you learn English as a catalyst uh, for their development in their STEM classes. Uh, and if I look at myself as a teacher, if I were teaching English majors, for example, I think the level of homework, the level, level of tests I would give would be increased. Uh, whereas where I'm currently teaching the capacity, uh, my students are physics majors or computer science majors. So I ought to give them the tools necessary to find success in those majors through English. Uh, and using uh, English as a tool for learning, um, I think one of the advantages I have as a language instructor or pedagogy instructor is that my classes are actually probably quite different from their lectures that take place in their STEM related classes. It's a lot of rote memorization, uh, formula learning. And so the ability uh, that I have to use my classroom as an engaging platform for learning, I think stretches beyond linguistic attainment, but gets students thinking about like the idea of knowledge, uh, the idea of learning capacity uh, and how they acquire knowledge as opposed to just uh, language learning. Okay. So I try to make my classrooms interactive uh, with student engagement. Uh, I view myself as a facilitator of teaching uh, rather than uh, the leader or the master in the class, uh, looking for at least 50-50 students to teach or talk uh, and having students take ownership within, within their classes. What types of classroom management do you use in your STEM classroom? So uh, in my STEM classroom, I try to utilize uh, individual, pair, and group work uh, in every class if possible. Uh, the classes here are two hours. We meet uh, two hours at a time. So there's ample opportunities uh, for, for students to move around in those different, uh, different platforms. Uh, moreover, uh, I try to get students to be able to uh, present on, present on their, their by themselves, uh, uh, present with partners, present with uh, groups and have mixed levels uh, in that. So if I have weaker students, I can have uh, pairs with stronger students. Um, I can have pairs with other weaker students uh, and constantly have a um, dynamic where the students are learning from each other rather than from me. I view my classroom as a microcosm of the real world and in an office, 
Uh, no one really works alone in a laboratory. Nobody works alone. And I view that as even in a language classroom, a student shouldn't be working alone and they should be getting guidance from each other, feedback from each other, uh, you know, putting emphasis on peer review process uh, and programs like this as opposed to strictly a lecture and PowerPoint based class. Okay, great. Yeah. And how do the teachers that you're training feel about the techniques you are teaching them? It's very interesting. Uh, actually, I get a lot of feedback from the STEM teachers that I do teacher training with, and they're always saying, yeah, but Matthew, in math, there's a formula, the students memorize it, and then we give them a test on it. Yeah, but Matthew, in biology, there's a experiment, there's a right or wrong answer, the students learn it, and we test them on it. Uh, so I get them to challenge those preconceived notions of what it's like for them to uh, teach students. I try to get them placed inside the students, uh, you know, the students' uh, shoes and ask them oftentimes, you know, what was the class you remembered as a kid growing up? What was your favorite class? And oftentimes it's the class that wasn't that lectured test uh, structure, excuse me, but rather classes that had, you know, engagement, interaction, the students were able to talk. Um, I, you know, I always encourage my student teachers to, um, give motivation to the students, to give encouragement to the students, as opposed to this right and wrong, this yes and no. Um, and if somebody does have a wrong answer, don't have the teachers necessarily correct that, but have another student give ideas or suggestions for a possible different answer. That's great. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about your classroom management techniques? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, classroom management is something that, uh, for STEM teachers or STEM students, um, or even Chinese students who have been kind of accustomed to this, this style of learning. The teacher is always right. They're the giver of information and the student is the acceptor uh, you know, of, of information. Um, to get students to challenge the teacher um, in a constructive way that fosters creative thinking um, and it's something that's not always easy. Uh, you know, it's pretty ingrained in their STEM um, approach to learning. Uh, and I think that if we can get teachers, I always tell, you know, my, my student teachers, you don't need to do two hours of, you know, interaction. Try 10 minutes at the end of class. The next week, try 20 minutes at the end of class. And eventually you'll see that once you pass ownership over to the students. The students don't take advantage of it, rather they use it as a, you know, positive tool for, for learning and for growth. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, anything else you want to say before we go on to the next topic? Uh, no, actually, I'll be starting my uh, teacher training program um, next week, as a matter of fact, uh, with a group of 40 postdoc TAs across I believe 12 different uh, disciplines, 12 different departments, all STEM related. Um, and so the opportunities that they have for cr cross collaboration, uh, you know, on a university campus such as this, the biology department really never interacts with the computer science department, which really never interacts with the, you know, mechanical engineering department. And by having these TAs grouped in my class working together, I think they see both similarities in their in their uh, disciplines as well as the differences. And if we look at kind of teaching from a larger a larger viewpoint, they can see that a lot of the things that I you know preach and, and teach them can apply to their their uh, departments and their their uh, subject matter. That's great. I'm looking forward. That you have that ability to kind of bring them all together into one place because there aren't many places on campus where that happens. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it uh, and looking forward to this semester's uh, the teacher development program. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're getting the opportunity to do that. Okay. Um, do you have any specific tips for teachers whose first language isn't English? Yeah, and I think it's the same tip for teachers whose first language is English. Learn with your students. Um, you know, I, I don't speak perfect English. Uh, if somebody were to grade my grammar or my pronunciation, unless you're from Southern California, I would probably fail. Uh, and so, yeah, leave, you know, leave room for improvement uh, for yourself. Uh, don't take yourself so seriously, but, you know, 
for non-native speakers of English who are teaching, grow with your students, learn with your students, learn from yourself, learn from your mistakes, um, and learn from your students. Uh, you know, one of the things working at STEM University, my students are geniuses in math and science and robotics and things like this that I don't know anything about. So why not have them uh, explain those concepts, explain those ideas in English, and you can learn not only English, but these, these tech things as well from them. Um, I let my students, uh, we have a group presentation as one of our projects, uh, as well as a uh, argumentative essay. And each semester, I let my students pick the topics every time. It would be much easier for me if I had a list of five topics that you know I just gave, but so in my classrooms in China this semester, I have students doing research on L on uh, LBGTQ uh, topics. Um, probably the only time in their life they're going to be able to address these topics through research. I have students doing it on current events like TikTok, uh, it's which is borderline tech but also can delve into areas of, um, you know, social, social issues. Um, I have students doing uh, research on gun rights in America. So again, letting the students have this ownership uh, and seeing what interests them as, you know, you're gonna find out what interests them just by their topics, but learning with them is more, more than anything. I think that's a great idea. We definitely should be learning from each other and learning, definitely learning from our students. They have a lot to offer. Yeah. Okay, so Matthew, aside from what you're doing in the classroom, what, what projects are you working on right now? Okay, uh, so my two major projects are, I do a TA teaching development program with TAs across campus. And I also work with three local area hospitals. Uh, we are building a medical school at our university. And so I'm doing teacher training with the brain surgeons, the heart surgeons, the cardiologists from these local area hospitals, because ultimately they will be the medical school, the medical school teachers. Uh, so a lot of teacher training projects um, are the two kind of academic things I'm working on, um, apart from, you know, my regular EAP classes uh, or, and I, I view, I like this Dr. Rose, because these teachers, these students of mine, these TAs and these doctors, they're multipliers. So whatever I teach one of them, they're gonna teach 30 students. Um, you know, when I teach my undergraduate, you know, EAP class, they're learning how to write research and then hopefully they'll use it when they write their physics dissertation. Um, but this, this teacher training thing, I, you know, I like it. Uh, and I got into it when I was working with the, uh, the language program in Ethiopia with the State Department. Uh, just this, this teacher training program, it's something um, that I, uh, you know, it's my favorite thing. Uh, and I, I do find empowerment in myself through that as well as giving empowerment to the, to the doctors and the TAs through that. And it's great to see them grow um, <laughs> excuse me, and be able to use these skill sets uh, and, you know, keep multiplying semester by semester. That's great. And have you written any articles recently? Yeah, um, actually, I write uh, once a month for the local uh, newspaper here, the Shenzhen Daily. Um, I did something similar the, in Ethiopia, I wrote once a month for the Ethiopian Herald mm -hmm. and in Korea for the Korea Times. Uh, and in China, something I've done that I didn't do in those other countries was get students to write articles. Um, so maybe two or three times a semester, a student will uh, get an article into the local newspaper. Um, also, I am currently writing a travel article for a Hong Kong-based travel magazine um, about uh, bicycling in Korea, uh, which is... Uh, I, one time I rode my bicycle from Seoul to Busan over the course of, I don't know, a week. Um, so I'm writing an article for that. I enjoy writing um, and I'm actually also writing an article for the, there's a student magazine that's published a quarter or every semester, I think, here at the university 
um, called Mind the Gap. And they, it's all in Chinese, but they always give, have one English article. <laughs> I wrote one in 2017 when I first got here about global education and my you know, viewpoints on different places I've been. Uh, and so this, this one I'll be writing uh, this semester for, for the student magazine. So yeah, a lot of writing. Yeah, and um, also you were gonna do a workshop um, for TTELT, right? Enhancing student, uh, you know, learning opportunities uh, in classrooms with different level learners. Uh, and I'm looking forward to doing this deal in language learning classrooms with different levels, uh, whether, you know, we, who do we teach to? Do we teach to all the levels? Do we teach the lower level, uh, the higher level? Uh, how do we use student ability to work together uh, to find strengths with each other as opposed to uh, settling for um, settling for just teaching, you know, to the lower level, kind of leaving out the higher level students. So we'll talk about group work, pair work, uh, informal assessment, um, and individualized work uh, in, a, in a classroom setting. Sounds great. And it looks like that's going to be at 11 a.m. UTC or GMT. It's going to be 11 a.m. GMT is 7 p.m. in Beijing. Yeah. Yeah. 7 p.m. here. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it uh, and uh, sharing some of the some of the ideas that I have that can help teachers uh, when they're in classrooms with you know. Very rarely do you get a classroom full of you know 30 students and they all have 110 on TOEFL. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't it's be always, in our classroom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we always have some sort of, of uh, level depending on the class. It could be a huge range or a small range, but there's always a range. So I think that's a great idea. And I think that yeah. this workshop on um, working with students from uh, different levels is a great idea. So we're looking forward to that workshop on December 2nd. Yeah, I'm excited about it and uh, I look forward to sharing some ideas with teachers. Okay. Um, well, where can teachers find you then, Matthew? Can you tell us your email address? Uh, well, like yeah, so my, uh, I, I, have, I have Twitter and my Twitter is actually all based pretty much on education uh, and that's mjellick, M-J-E-L-L-I-C-K. Uh, my email, similarly, is mjellick at gmail, uh, which I can get with a VPN here in China. Uh, and so uh, I can be found on those two platforms. And again, uh, um, sharing, uh, and as a matter of fact, I think uh, yesterday I posted something on Twitter about upcoming um, staff workshop series I will be doing here uh, at the university. Uh, and tomorrow is my first one. Um, it's on office English. Oh, wow. uh, so office English, yeah. Uh, language in a uh, professional environment, uh, English language in a professional environment. And these are geared towards uh, staff at the university and how to communicate, uh, you know, at an international university. Um, and so I'll be, I'll be doing that tomorrow. But yeah, um, email and I, I would love actually to get emails uh, from teachers around the around the globe. And as a Virgo, I always respond to my emails within, you know, two or three uh, hours, sometimes minutes. Uh, I, I, my inbox has to be zero. So if you do email me, I can guarantee you'll get a response. Uh, and so yeah, I love to communicate. Um, and through uh, Twitter, of course, share my articles and my workshops and my classes and, and links to different uh, programs that I'm doing. That's great. Well, we're going to put all of that in the sh in the notes so that everyone can find you on Twitter and on and Gmail. And um, yeah. definitely we'll be putting um, the, some of the links to some of the articles that you've written that people so people can find those if they want to read more about what you've done. So I think that was You've shared so much with us today. It's just been fabulous. Thanks so much for taking the time to um, to do this interview with TTLT. Yeah, and of course, Dr. Rhodes, I do want to express my sincere thanks to you. Uh, I remember having you as a professor uh, back in 2011 uh, with the USC program and uh, through your classes. And again, 
you were a facilitator of learning and I learned just as much from you as I did from the other colleagues in my cohort. And I think that's the mark of a good teacher. Uh, we never were just quiet and watch, listen to you, you know, give us a lecture. Um, and I, I tried to replicate that, you know, nine years later uh, in a different country around the world. Um, that idea that we are a community of learners inside a classroom. And if we can learn and grow from each other, uh, it makes us all stronger um, and yeah, act as multipliers of sustainable uh, educational growth. So thank you. Uh, well, you're welcome and thank you. I, I love to see my former students growing and doing so many amazing things. So I really appreciate that you took the time to share all of these things with us. It's fabulous. Great. Thanks. Thanks again for for taking the time to listen to me. And uh, I look forward to the workshop and, of course, uh, communicating with with any teachers out there who would like to, more, to know more information. All right. Well, th thanks for coming. See you later. All right. Thank you. Mm, bye. All right. Well, that we learned so much in that interview, didn't we? Well, let's talk about some of the top teaching tips when it comes from to when it comes to classroom management. Matthew recommends that we focus a lot on teaching English that is for communication. So in his course, he makes sure that the students understand that they're going to need English for communication, even though it's not the main subject that they're learning, but he helps them understand that the ways that they're going to need English in their studies and after they finish university so that they see it as a um, something that they need to be able to communicate in. And that helps a lot with his classroom management, which is students understand that this is something they really need to learn. And he says it also is important that the class is engaging and interactive. And um, to make it engaging and interactive, he likes to do a mix of individual, pair, and group work in each of his two-hour classes. So he does some activities that are individual, some that are pair, and some that are group work. And he also thinks it's very important that his students learn from each other and realize that in the real world, we are often learning from our colleagues and from our peers, and we're not off, often, we're not learning from our higher ups. So he likes to create that atmosphere where the students learn um, how to learn from each other and they do group work and they work together. Those were the top teaching tips for classroom management from Matthew. Lots of ideas to think about. And now that we've learned so much from Matthew, we get to have a workshop. He's going to do a workshop on enhancing student learning in multi-level classes on December 2nd at 11 a.m. GMT, uh, which is going to be 7 p.m. for him in Beijing. So let's get ready for his workshop on enhancing student learning in multi-level classes at uh, 11 a.m. GMT. So get ready for that. That's gonna be fun. And don't forget that we also have the, uh, the um, pronunciation tips workshop on November 20th at 11 p.m. Uh, GMT. So this is a Friday at 11 p.m. GMT or 4 p.m on the Pacific Coast with Nicole. She'll be giving us some great pronunciation tips. And also don't forget about the workshop that Beth is going to be doing on student engagement tips on December 4th at 11 p.m. GMT. My goodness, so many workshops. We are so lucky. Look at all these workshops. Yeah, and it doesn't stop. We have another one on December 5th. Um, we get to have a workshop with Armin, who is going to be talking to us about Padlets and how to use Padlets. And I know that if you saw the episode, you know how excited he is about Padlets. So he has so much to share. And you might leave the workshop with your own Padlet. It's going to be awesome. So in this one, is going to be December 5th at 2 p.m. GMT. So December 5th, 2 p.m. GMT, which is the day after Beth's um, workshop. So we get two workshops in a row. It's actually pretty much that full week. We have one on the second, one on the fourth, one on the fifth. We've got so many workshops that week. That's crazy. I hope you have uh, some free time to participate in at least one of them, maybe all of them. Wouldn't that be great? 
make sure that we thank Bryant at Inspiring Educators for interviewing me for his podcast, as well as Armin Casabane for um, interviewing me for the English Language Fellow podcast. So thank you very much, both of you, for taking the time to interview me and to help spread the word about TTELT. And always remember, if you want to be part of our team, you can tell us a tip that you'd like to share, a journal article or a blog that you'd like us to, dis to read and discuss. And you can recommend someone to be interviewed, or you can even recommend yourself. And if you just have questions, comments, or suggestions, please um, make sure that you take a minute to send us a voicemail at ttelt.org or write me an email at tteltinfo at gmail.com or um, subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And of course you, you should, if you haven't already, I mean, I hope you are, but if you haven't already join our Facebook group, TTELT and follow us on Twitter at TTELT1 and on Instagram at T.TELT. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.